In the name of Allah, the merciful, the compassionate. All praises to Allah, the creator of the universes and their sustainer, the provider of believers and unbelievers. And may his choicest blessings be on the seal of his prophets, the last of his messengers and his holy progeny. I have been invited to speak on the khutbah of Sayyida Zahra Salamullahi alayha which she delivered in the court of the Khalif when Fadak was confiscated from her. I say confiscated because no compensation was paid, was even considered. Well, there is no doubt in history that Fadak was already in possession of uh, Sayyida Zahra, Salamullahi alayha, in the lifetime of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny. On the martyrdom of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny, the Khalif decided that Fadak should be in possession of the state and sent his messengers, his, his, his managers, to the land to take over the land from the managers that, were, that had been appointed by Sayyida Zahra Salamullahi Alayha. When these managers were ousted, they obviously came and reported the matter to Sayyida, saying that they had been ousted by representatives of the Khalif who had taken over Fadak. She did not remain quiet about it. She was very upset and immediately decided that she would walk to the court of the Khalif and make her plea. So, accompanied by a few ladies, she took that course. Some books even report that she had her daughter Zainab salam, holding her finger in one hand and her daughter Umm Kulthum salam, holding her finger in the other hand. These, these were important personalities and these were personalities who in the days to come had to address Yazid in, the, in his court in Damascus after he had murdered Imam Hussein salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. Well, she walked to the, to, the, to the mosque of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny, because that is where the uh, Khalif was sitting and um, this was only a few days after the martyrdom of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny. And having got there, she sat down and delivered a complete speech. It is fantastic to see the reactions of Ahlul Bayt salam, on these occasions and the words that she used the concepts that she enunciated, the, the depth that she, 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 that she probed into, into various aspects of Islam. And that is where our learning lies. We can learn so much from that speech that she delivered. Indeed, from any speech that any member of the Ahlul Bayt delivered. She, indeed, is the fulcrum of Ahlul Bayt the definition of Ahlul Bayt came in her home when the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny, visited her saying that he was feeling feverish and wanted to, to be covered by, by a kisa, by, a, by, by a, a covering. And then came one after the other. The first to come was Hassan alayhi salam. The second to come was Hussein alayhi salam. The third to come was Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. And then maybe Fatima Zahra alayhi salam herself entered the Kisa. And when there were five there, the ayah of the Tahir, that famous ayah, 
Number 33 of Surah Ahzab was delivered. Innama yuridu Allahu li yudhiba ankum al-rids ahlul bayt wa yutahhirakum tathira. The will of Allah that the ahlul bayt should be purified of all impurities and be perfected by a thorough part of purification. Well, <clears throat> different questions could have arisen as to who the Ahlul Bayt are. But the Holy Prophet circumscribed the circle. Only those under the Kisa, under that covering, were the Ahlul Bayt at the time. Well, his other uh, wives approached, seeking to enter the, the, the covering and be with the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny, but they were refused entrance. And this episode is recorded even in Sahih Bukhari, at the narration of Aisha. So there is no question about that narration as to who constituted Ahlul Bayt And after the five, the, 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 the Imams السلام, who came from the progeny of Imam Hussein السلام, were included in the Ahlul Bayt because indeed their lives showed perfect a perfect example of how they were purified and how they lived a life in which not one impurity could be found. Indeed, all this is from the ahadith of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him himself. He himself set out the names of all the 12 Imams السلام, who would be his successors and set out the fact that they would be Ahlul Bayt السلام, who would be purified. So all these matters are within authority. I do not labor on them because I wish to come to this khutbah of, uh, of uh, Sayyidah Fatima alayha salam because that is the invitation I've been given to, 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 to discuss that full khutbah. And it is, it is a long enough khutbah which will take a little time. I do not today indulge in whether the confiscation of Fadak from her was legitimate or not because this matter will be discussed in the khutbah itself. And I leave it, I leave it to, 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 to discuss this matter in the words of the illustrious lady herself in her perfection. The khutbah that I follow comes from uh, ihtijaj of Sheikh Tabrasi, rahmatullahi alayh. That is the, 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 the khutbah that I follow and has been regarded almost unanimously as, as authentic in, in uh, what, what it contains. So when she enters the mosque and is received, she sits down and the first thing that she sets out are praises of Allah, glorified and exalted. And this is, this is unique with Ahlul Bayt salam. All their khutbahs start with praise of Allah, glorified and exalted. Indeed, it is to spread the message of Allah, to spread the name of Allah, glorified and exalted, that they were ever sent on earth. And it is for that reason that they carried the purification that was um, gifted to them by Allah glorified and exalted. Indeed, indeed, great sacrifice was made by them to obtain that uh, purification and to maintain it. Well, she starts that address in, 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 in words of thanking of Allah glorified and exalted. He, her opening words are, Alhamdulillahi ala ma an'am. Praise is to Allah for that which he has bestowed upon us. Generally, the us is, is uh, that, 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 that she has bestowed. My addition of upon us was only to make sense, but us meaning us all, the, 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 the an'ama, the, the, the blessings of Allah are, 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 are bestowed generally on all creatures. But it is significant that she starts the, the, the khutbah with praise of Allah. And in those praises, the first praise that she touches upon 
are the blessings that Allah has bestowed on humanity as a whole. Indeed, the, one of the greatest blessings is, is the Ahlul Bayt salam, themselves, and she is the foundation of it. The 11 Imams salam, that followed Amir al-Mu'mineen were all her children, were all her children. The messenger of Allah, glorified and exalted, was her father. She was the fulcrum, as it were. And that is why, in that eye of the tear, when the, the, the personalities that were under the, uh, under the cover are identified, they are identified through her. Hum Fatima wa abiha wa ba'liha wa baniha. The, the five who were under the, under the kisa were Fatima alayha salam, her father, her husband, and her two sons. So you can see in matters of purification, in matters of for you tahira kum tahira, that we have made you purified with a thorough purification, she was the fulcrum. And it was in her house that the event occurred. Um, so we are talking of a personality that has supreme position in the eyes of Allah, glorified and exalted. Else, else would the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny, who was the messenger of Allah, stand up every time she presented herself in his audience. Well, but I do not want to lengthen those matters because I do wish to proceed with the, with the khutbah. So you can see the first opening is praise to Allah and praise for his benediction, for, for, for his blessings. Alhamdulillahi ala ma an'am Praise be to Allah for all that he has bestowed on humanity. <clears throat> and the next thing she says is, Walahu shukr ala ma alham. And thanks to him. And there is gratitude to him for what he has inspired us. All that we are able to do in this world is through inspiration from Allah, glorified and, and, and exalted. La tawfiq illa billah. We do, not get, we do not get the good fortune to do good except by inspiration from Allah, glorified and exalted. All good is from Him. All virtue is from Him. Evil is not from Him because Ma'adullah Ta'ala, He cannot send evil. He is too pure. He is, his fountain is a fountain of purity from which only purity flows on all his, on all his creatures. So in the praises of Allah, this first paragraph of this khutbah is only praising Allah glorified and exalted. But those praises of Allah shows the depth of the knowledge of Allah glorified and exalted which this illustrious lady possessed. Hence we have these ahadiths that she would spend the whole night on the prayer mat worshipping Allah glorified and exalted. Hence Imam Ali salam, was the best suitor for her because he too would want to spend the whole night on the prayer mat worshipping Allah glorified and exalted. A number of ahadiths flow which are contained in, an, in, in, in all Muslim books unanimously on the, on the uh, piety of uh, Bibi Fatima to Zahra Salamullahi Alayha and, and, and they are famous, they are famous. And so it is, it is, it is befitting that she should be starting these, this khutbah praising Allah. But the, the praises she, that she makes of Allah are so, are so uh, deep and there is so much teaching in them that the concept of tawheed flows out of, of it. And how she has been able to compress it in one paragraph is absolutely fantastic. But what is baffling is that this lady had just lost her illustrious father, may Allah's peace be upon the Holy Prophet and his progeny. And she was so disturbed, indeed, indeed, famous is, are, the, are her words, that she became so, so affected by the martyrdom of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny, and her loss of the, her physical loss of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny, that she said that if, if the, 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 the day, the midday would become midnight, the darkness it would spread was the state of her bereavement. 
So she was in that state in which she had just lost her father. She was in the state in which um, Imam Ali alayhi salam, had just been uh, uh, arrested and uh, Khilafa was taken away from him. He had already been appointed a Khalif. People had already given allegiance to him. But that was, was, was uh, all set aside and a new Khalif came into office. And despite that situation, and it is not the Khilafa that mattered so much to Bibi Fatima to Zahra sallamullahi alayha. What was of significance was that Imam Ali to her was appointed by Allah glorified and exalted to succeed the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny. And that, that position was removed from the appointee of Allah glorified and exalted. And Despite that state and despite the physical disabilities she sustained because she had been assaulted when, when, uh, when uh, Amir al-Mu'mineen was arrested and taken away from, from his home, she was badly assaulted and even lost a baby. That is the background of the state in which this illustrious lady was. And yet, when she comes to make this address, it is not, it is not, the, the, the piece of land that matters to her so much. She did not start with that at all. It is Allah glorified and exalted. And to praise Allah, and in that state of mind, and this is the only reason why I set out the background of this state in which she was when she made this speech. Despite the fact that that was her condition at the prevailing time, she praises Allah in a way that is perhaps unparalleled. In the, in the various uh, accounts of Allah glorified and exalted. But she gives us a true picture of divinity, a true picture of Tawheed in, 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 these, in, the, in these statements. And the first three opening statements, the first which we just looked at, Alhamdulillah, all praise to Allah for all that he has bestowed. And what is there that he has not bestowed? Glorified and exalted he is. And then, the second sentence, Wallahu shukr, there is praise for him, but that is never enough. There is also thanks for him, alama, alham, for all the inspiration that he has given. Because all inspiration, ma tawfiq illa billah, all, 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 all goodness, all um, inspiration comes from Allah. And, and the word she uses is alham, which is, which is also in, in inspiration. So she, he, 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 she thanks Allah for the inspiration. It is the inspiration from Allah, glorified and exalted, that enables us to do good. And to, that is the first thing that she thanks Allah. But it also gives us a clear picture that when she comes to make this speech, she has no earthly motives. She has no, 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 no financial considerations in mind. What is in her mind is Allah glorified exalt and exalted and nobody other than him, nothing else other than his glory. And the third thing, thanks is, bima, bima, bima qadam. And bima qadam. And all praises to him, all praises all, 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 and all praises for, for, for what he has provided. Bima qaddam, what he has provided in advance, as it were. Before the earth was even created, before man was even sent on earth, his requirements were provided for by Allah glorified and exalted. And he made sure that man would be able to live on the earth in, 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 in a manner in which his necessities would be fulfilled. All those provisions that Allah made. For example, if we need air to breathe, then sufficient oxygen in the air for us to be able to breathe. We do not need carbon dioxide. That comes out. The plants have been created to absorb all the carbon dioxide, our sustenance, our fruits that we need. Our, our other food that we need to eat, all those provisions that Allah glorified and exalted made in advance, she says, and he be praised for that which he has provided.
you can see that she she deals with with the praises of Allah in an exhaustive manner and yet in such short sentences and in such in such in, in, in such and in such brevity such brevity can only be attained by a person who has depth of knowledge so that words are chosen to express much more in fewer words well it appears that this capacity of eloquence this capacity to 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 express things in such in in such a scholarship and such excellence is a special gift that Allah glorified and exalted has given to Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. And this is a point that the fourth Imam alayhi salam, Imam Sajjad alayhi salam, makes in his speech in the court of Yazid. I will not um, digress into it, but this is a point he specifically makes. And one sees that illustrated in the first speech of a lady of that excellence in the court of a caliph in the, in the Islamic commonwealth. Well, having said that, having set out that, that those three, three praises of Allah, glorified and exalted, she proceeds to say, Min umumi ni'im ibtidaha. He created out of favors which were prevalent. Min umumi ni'im ibtidaha. He, 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 he started this world. He created it all through favors which were already which were which were already in existence. In other words, he who would be able to tell us how this world was created other than those who knew how it was created, other than those who were indeed present when it was created. And and this is and this is their state. The Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and his progeny says that ma khalaq Allahu nuri. The first thing that Allah created was 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 His light, was the light of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and his progeny. And from that light, His Ahlul Bayt alayhi muslam were immediately created. Well, so maybe Zahra alayhi salam knew exactly how the creation took place. And she's able to speak about it in, 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 in confidence and in truthfulness. Indeed, truthfulness is not an issue because the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny, called her Siddiqa. Well, that is the truthful. So, so, so her level of, of, uh, of uh, veracity is at its peak. Indeed, she, she says, Min umumi ni'am ibtidaha, he started the earth out of out of favors which were already prevalent so if 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 um, if uh, air was needed then air already existed for the for the for 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 men to breathe oxygen already existed at that time and all these requirements were already in in place before man was brought on earth and all the requirements for plants survival were in existence before plants were brought, brought onto the earth, Allah, glorified and exalted, provides for the requirements of his creatures before he even creates them. That is, that is his grace. That is, that is his, 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 his functioning of, of, of perfection. So, so she says all these, these necessities and favors were in place so that when man comes on earth, he has all these all these provisions ready for him to continue with his sustenance. وَسُبُوغِ alahi asdaha, And not only were all, all, all these favors prevalent, but abundant benefiction, she says, which he offered and, 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 and perfect grants which he presented. وَسُبُوغِ alahi, Abundant of favors. He, 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 he had already provided for. Indeed, these favors were extremely important because man was coming on earth as a st total stranger and had to provide for his sustenance, had to provide for his, his means of existence. Allah, glorified and exalted, knew what these requirements would be and made provision for them all. And this is, this is how she she commences this khutbah 
This is how she praises Allah glorified and exalted for his total perfection in the creation of man and in sending him on earth. We are grateful to the illustrious lady for educating us on these matters relating to Tawheed. This is, this is indeed the function that Ahlul Bayt salam, has performed par excellence and, has, and have told us exactly how Allah glorified and exalted created man and provided for man. What is amazing is that even in the state in which she was, she is able to come and praise Allah in this way. You can see this knowledge is embedded in her. This knowledge flows in her blood. The, 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 the love for Allah glorified and exalted is such that when she starts speaking on Allah glorified and exalted, everything else is, is superseded and she concentrates on Allah. May Allah give us tawfiq to study more on Bibi Fatima Zahra Salamullahi Alayha to understand her more and to follow her grace teachings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi 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 wa rahmatullah